What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So tonight what we're gonna do is talk about the active addresses on the Bitcoin network. We're going to do this with relation to the price of Bitcoin. And we're going to go over the price history of Bitcoin over time and how it has related to the number of active addresses on the network. So specifically, we're going to do this through the long-term perspective in order to visualize or to think about where we might end up in future market cycles. So the first thing I wanna say, I'm sure you obviously are noticing immediately, I'm not at home right now, I'm traveling, and I'm not using my primary equipment, as you can tell. The audio quality sucks and the video quality sucks. You know, <laughs> it really makes you appreciate, or it makes me appreciate anyway, the equipment I have at home. I never realized how large the difference was from the equipment that I started with until you know, I started doing this recording here today because this is the first time I've used this equipment since probably my first month or so making videos. So as an aside to the main point today, I've heard in other places, you know, talking about the opportunity cost of buying this or buying that is simply too high because you could be buying Bitcoin with it or you could be buying, you know, whatever investment it is. But remember, the opportunity cost of not living your life, you know, doing things like I'm on vacation right now. Sure, I could stay at home and, you know, focus on making videos and trying to grow the channel, but you have to keep in perspective what is important in your life. And, you know, you only get one of them. I'm not saying go out there and blow all your money on frivolous things, but remember, you only get one life. Make sure you enjoy it. So with that said, let's get into the video. Okay, so what we're doing here is looking at the number of active addresses over time on the Bitcoin network. So you can see that the number of active addresses over time for Bitcoin has essentially been just constantly increasing. We've seen retractions of the number of total active addresses at certain points in time. And you'll notice that these occur right around the points of market cycle peaks because after these you know, blow off top type events, or just simply market cycle peaks, we see a general loss of retail interest. Okay, so you know, back, back in 2011, obviously not a lot of transactions going on on the Bitcoin network, dropping from 26,000 down to 11,000 after the uh, market cycle peak, you saw a fair drop after the first peak in the 2013 cycle and a smaller drop after the, you know, the total market cycle peak. But you see that in general, over that time, the, the number of active addresses continued to rise. We saw the same thing then again occur in 2018. You know, just the, the interest and the, you know, just the general retail interest in Bitcoin growing over the course of the, you know, the two market cycles. So here's our peak in 2013 in November. And then we just continue to gain interest throughout the, you know, setting of the bear market. So then what you saw was this place where we just basically did nothing but headed upwards until we hit our market cycle peak in 2017 for Bitcoin we're referring to. We hit our peak and then retracted a significant quantity. We went from a max um, active addresses on the network from around 1.2 million all the way down to around an average, you know, you can see that it jumps around a lot here, but an average of around 500,000. And since that time, we've been increasing the number of active addresses on the network yet again through this cycle until we got back to a very similar peak, uh, you know, here in May of 2021. So, you know, what does this mean? What you can see is, you know, after the the bear market that started in 2018, we fell all the way down to 500,000, like we said, and then it even through the bear market, it just continues to climb. And that's because you, you get a shakeout of sorts. And what a shakeout simply means is the retail interest in the market sort of gets wiped out. And that's good. That's good for assets because, you, you sort of lose all the weak hands, they get, you know, shaken out, hence the name of the market, and then the cycle, or even the next cycle can then begin its process. And that's what we've seen happen here. You know, if you go back to 2018, 
you can see a very similar thing. But notice now one key point. Whereas the shakeout occurred in 2018, sending us down to 500,000 active users, in this cycle, if you look at where we're stabilizing at, it's more, you know, it's closer to around 800,000 active addresses on the network. So the, you know, you want to see a continued increase in the number of active addresses over time. If the shakeout occurred and we only went down to 500,000, or, you know, we went down to 500,000 and sort of stabilized at that level, that would be a less positive sign. But we're seeing exactly what we would want to see. We, we have a, you know, this big move in the market, a shakeout, and then when we return, we want to see it at a higher level than it occurred before. And that's what we're seeing. So that's a positive sign. So the next thing we're going to look at is, you know, we're going to take a look at the price of Bitcoin per active address. So what that simply means is if the price of Bitcoin were, you know, hypothetically were $40 and there were four active addresses on the network, that would mean the network was worth $10 per active address, 40 divided by four. Okay. So we're going to look at this and see if the value of the network per active address is increasing over time, which we would want to see. And in fact, that is what we see. We see that the price of Bitcoin, so this is the price of Bitcoin divided by the number of active addresses. And what we're seeing is basically a very defined trend. So we're just going to draw this line. We're going to just go right through there. And you can see that we've basically formed, you know, with only short amounts of time during the more blow off top type events in the network, we've been just sort of moving right along this line. You could almost imagine this line is the, you know, near the upper limit of what the value of the network is. And then we could do the same thing along the lower limit. These will be the more bearish times in the market. And we've essentially moved right along this lower line. So we've bounced between, you know, somewhere around this upper line and down to this lower line. And this is, you can think of as the value of the network again. And, you know, remember, we're looking at a logarithmic scale. So we're looking at quite a large, um, you know, each, each jump up to the next number is a significant increase in value. So what you see is during the peak stages of the last market cycle, Bitcoin got up to around 0 0.02, so 0 0.019. And what does that mean? That means the network was valued at approximately two cents per active address on the network. Okay, and then after the, you know, once the bear market started, we dropped all the way down to around five tenths of a cent. Okay, so not even a cent. We fell down around four X down to this lower limit. All right, now you have to remember though, if you look at these trend lines in the way that they're moving, the, you know, the peak, the distance from the peak to the bottom is decreasing over time. They're getting closer together, all right, as we, you know, go through time. Now, currently, the if you looked from, you know, where we're at right now, the peak level that you may expect the value of the Bitcoin network to be is around eight cents per active address. And the bottom at that same point in time is around two cents per active address. So critically, what does that mean? If you draw a horizontal line here and we go right through our last market cycle peak, right when we hit this top, so up here at around point, or you know, right when we hit around two cents per active address, that's right around where we're at right now. So the bottom, so the very bottom, you could imagine the Bitcoin network being valued at, if it continued along this trend line, which, you know, in my opinion, all indications are that it will, the very minimum value that you could, uh, you know, uh, ascribe to the network would be the absolute maximum value you could ascribe to the network in the last market cycle per user. And remember, critically, the number of users we're seeing on the network is increasing over time. So that means the value of our network is not only increasing by the number of users, but the actual value per user is increasing. Okay, so 
if you think about what does that mean, what exactly does that mean? That means, it, you know, should things continue along, you know, the way that they're, they're going right now, which all indications suggest they will, and, you know, will continue to watch. It doesn't mean that it has to keep happening like this, but it simply indicates that over time, the value of Bitcoin is increasing. And this is, you know, for nothing more than a network with more users on it is more valuable. This is, you know, a known fact. We've talked about it many times, Metcalf's law, you know, the value of a network is equal to the, you know, ec the, uh, it's an exponential value of the total number of users on the network. And so that's what we're seeing happening. We're moving up to this higher level, this higher valuation, when, then we hit a market cycle peak, a blow off top type event. So, you know, sh we have a relatively short lived amount of time along the upper trend line, and then we bounce back down. All right. And it looks like, at least from where we're at right now, for, you know, a short amount of time, we may be heading down to this lower limit. But we've, you know, based on what we know, and as long as nothing changes in the, you know, the overall market, as long as there's no paradigm shift in the market, you know, and I'm talking about the broader market, not just the crypto market, as long as nothing changes there, you know, we don't go into some deep overall bear market in the, you know, the general economy, in the general market, as long as that doesn't happen, you would expect this to continue at least for the foreseeable future now at some point we may drop off of this you know this uh, valuation curve and you know that's the kind of thing we watch for on this channel we watch for the macro level trends and for you know paradigm shifts in the macro level trends whatever they may be good or bad we don't cherry pick which ones are good which ones are bad we look at all of them and just try to you know relay them to you so that you can at least at minimum be aware of what's happening and then use that to formulate your own conclusions the bottom line is right now we're sitting at around four cents per active address on the network okay so what we want to see is if this will continue down if it does it may you know finish its you know descent down to the lower level somewhere at around two and a half cents would be a fair estimate two to two and a half cents what we typically see in even in the bear market we see that this this uh the number of active addresses trends up during the bear market we've seen it in each bear market and we're seeing it again right now we're seeing a general uptrend in the number of active addresses so you you know you're slowly regaining interest you're slowly increasing the number of active addresses even if the price per active address is dropping you're still increasing the number of active addresses and the way it goes when you finally get down to this lower level you usually need a little bit of time you know you see this uh half this fake um, bull market we had in 2019 we needed a little bit more time we came back down to the trend line held this general trend that we've been forming, and then we're able to go on the bull run. So, you know, what what might that look like? Well, you know, it could be something like this, where we go down, we ride along this level for some time, and then, you know, then are able to go back up. And where might we be in the next cycle is a fair question. And let's just assume that, you know, the next cycle were to occur and you know this is a major assumption and a flawed one but it's worth just looking at some numbers and so you know fit around 1400 to 1500 days between this cycle uh between the 2014 to the 2018 cycle and you know approximately same same thing so we'll just say let's just pretend that the next cycle happens somewhere at around after a thousand days from now okay so we'll just say somewhere after right here well, the upper end of the trend line at this point is somewhere around um, 22 cents per active user. And, you know, getting all the way up, the farther out you go, let's say up to 30 cents. So per active address on the network, you may anticipate if there's no paradigm shift in the market, which is what we always say, the investing is in a series of if then statements. The way that in my opinion, any successful investor, not day trader, 
works. Even day traders, that's why they set stop losses, right? So anyone who's a successful investor, so let's even include day traders, you have a series of if then statements that you use to establish the rules by which you approach the market. So with that said, if nothing fundamentally shifts in the market and we enter our next bull run in some length of time that is, you know, comparable to what we've seen previously, you may expect the value of the network to have increased approximately three times from where it was at its peak during this market cycle, somewhere between three to four times. In addition to that, you may expect an increased total number of active addresses on the network. That's kind of, you know, just another way to look at this market and to sort of begin to come up with some general ideas of where we may be able to get to. Now, this is obviously, there's a lot of flaws in the way that we're doing this. We're just drawing a trend line and, you know, we're not even optimizing the trend line. There's, a, you know, we could tilt this angle slightly and this changes things or, you know, um, do something like this. It's just, we're just speaking broadly right now. And, you know, I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm on vacation. So I'm just trying to do a, you know, a general analysis of this interesting trend. And it caught my eye merely for the fact that um, the value of the network currently, you know, we're sitting at right at um, four cents per active address. And we're right at about half the value of where we were at our peak. So that's kind of why it caught my eye. And I thought it would be interesting to do a video on. So um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as usual, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everyone who's, you know, supported me all along so far. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. So until next time, as usual, see you.